morning, everyone. How is Ella doing? I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of context about why I'm doing this. So, I guess some of you, Nicolas Sofa, I, I always say you have to pay attention. <laughs> I, I was known as Dr. Theo. <clears throat> okay, so, um, it just, I guess it happened to you one or more times that you're using small talk, you're using some kind of feature, you feel that it could be better. And um, you did happen that those students, I think something happens, probably in the sky is open, a ring of light comes, like shadow out on you and said, yeah, you have to do it, you have to make this better. So this was the case for me, uh, the feature that what was involving, involving this uh, was the um, Five methods we uh, sourced with it. I don't know if you use it, but it's right here. It was at least. What this does is it scans all the source code in the image, looking for the for the stream or substring that I selected. In this case, it was uh, self here. Let me put this here, and it basically that's a uh, does a linear search. Uh, kind of taking the source code of, of all, all the methods include this this hell string that is selected. Uh, as you can notice, this, the problem with this is it is very slow, right? We can profile this here. It takes about five seconds <clears throat> on my machine to run, which is kind of five minutes. Then probably six or go via the reason of math in between. Uh, while the search is running, but if you want to build interactive tools, kind of for example, this a lot, right? And what I'm looking for is like I wanted to beam a plugin for a tool that I have. It's called the Finder. It's kind of a, a spotter like tool where you can uh, give the results as you type, right? So if I have, if I have to put the parents of five seconds, it's time my type. Then it is still for it to work. I think I'm going to be throwing my machine away probably. So I'm going to kind of give you a preview of what it looks like when you implement the technique I'm about to talk about. This is very uncomfortable. It's very small screen here. So <clears throat> the find them uh, is a tool that you have. A lot of plugins, each one provides a different kind of information and performs the, the search related to that plugin. So you have classes, selectors, and there's the tools running that you got run right on the system. And um, this info element that I be which is the, the source code one, right? So we have if I type self here, you know that I, I have an, about, there are about 20,000 methods with self, it's a popular screen, right? Uh, I can talk about, we can measure that later. Well, have the 40 milliseconds, which means it's about three times, five times faster than the uh, original algorithm used to 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 apply strings uh, on the image, right? Or So basically, when b before I, I find out the solution, I, I kind of feel like, okay, we'll, we're kind of building a, a search engine here, and this is not going to be easy, right? Um, I do use some IDs, which are very good at these, like Visual Studio Code, or probably uh, the ones from JetBrains. They are very good at, at, at finding stuff and very fast, and I wanted something like that for Buis in this case. So I did some research. <clears throat> And I found out kind of a couple of pointers that then need to be final solution. But before that, a little bit of statistics here. I'm running the, the quiz university distribution of quiz. It has around 13 compiled methods. Because we're going to be working with words or part of words, there are about one following three media words on this image. And that's about six books. Right, six four hundred page books. So it's not a it's not a big, good a big system, but for this kind of searches, it is a lot of information that you have to have. Lucky for us, 
uh, we solved this problem a long time ago with books. Uh, the solution is called indexes, indices, right? In this case, we have an index that uh, allows us to quickly jump to the page that contains either uh, chapters or sections within the chapter. It's so, so it's a special kind of index. And I was, when I was taking a look at the, or at our bidon of Blue Book, I found out that this, this cool part um, at the end, you have a subject index, which is the usual index that you can find on books. It masks concepts to the pages where that concept uh, appears. But this funny paragraph up here says that they took the, they, they took the, they cared of building three extra uh, indexes for us, right? The first one is the system index, which lets you access the uh, fine pages where the system classes are initially. There's the example index and the implementation index as well. So again, three extra uh, indices that are built for a specific purpose here. Uh, the system index to show an example you can find all the pages where really Boolean is, is used or mentioned, right? But we have a little problem here because if we build indices uh, based on words, it will only work if we search for call words, right? If we want to search for part of the words, then it, 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 it's not the right type of index to use. I mean, people probably need this low. So we have to do better. Uh, the solution here is uh, all information with tribal uh, technique called engrams. For those of you who don't know, an engram is a sequence or a group of, of n consecutive of elements from a collection. I mention collection because the engrams could be words, it could be characters, and if in our case, we're going to use characters and we're going to use n equal three. So this means that given a word, we're going to be studying the word three, char three characters at a time, and uh, then there will be some power map between them. We're going to see an example here. Uh, Boolean 3 is a good question. Um, if we use uh, a bigger n, we'll have a kind of few engrams. So the list of code pages where those engrams appear will be larger, so and the linear search will be more expensive. And if, if we use an n that is small, if, if we take one, if we index this character A appears in one of these pages, we'll have any kind of we'll have kind of the same problem. So then in the in the papers and in, in the in the field looks like any it was really look it's a kind of a sweet spot to use. Uh, so we have the three yellow here. We want to split it into three arms or triangles. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, so what we do is to take the first three characters and extract that. We move one character, we extract the next three, and then we do the same until we reach the end of the strings. So we have three trigrams for the word hello here. And the way uh, it will work is that we will yield an index, just like the one I showed in the blue book, but it's, it's still having um, words and the places where the word appears will have a trigram and the places where the trigram is a beer, and I will talk about that right now. By the way, I apologize for, for using kind of dead slides on a motor conference. This should be running on a light system. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how this to make it so closest like this. Cool. All right. Okay. Let's go over here. So we have to be uh, some tools to to finally be able to win this index. We first we have to be able to extract uh uh and grab us from a word. In this case, I, I'm not going to show the implementation, but it's pretty trivial. We have an engram, engram tokenizer. I mean, create an instance of, say, of size three would, will give us three values. 
And as I, as I showed in the example before, if we copy it as the handle war, we'll get these uh, three prior apps, right? Then I talk about uh, building an index. Um, this is very related to WinRAMs. Uh, the kind of index that I show uh, on the on the on the book and the one that we will use are called inverted indexes, right? Um, and the idea is that the, for the key you use a term. It, it can be a word, it can be an integer, whatever you, you you want. And the values which are called the the posting lists or or the list where the uh, of the places where that term appear. Uh, is for you ready to store where that uh, term appears. So in this case, I have a total example of an inverted index just to show how how it works. Uh, I'm classifying some apple, cherry, and ball. And for apple, I'm saying uh, it appears on the fruit location uh, and on the red location, this is made up just for this example. The same for the cherry and uh, for the ball is red, but is on the toy uh, location too, right? Then you can ask the index K, give me all the uh, entries at this location. If we look for red, we'll get apple, ball, and cherry, all the entries because they are all red. And uh, you can also say, hey, give me all the entries in all of these sublocations, fruit and red. In this case, you will get apple and cherry, but I'm not bold because this is on the on the on toy uh, location, right? Okay. Finally, with these two uh, eating blocks, we can build a trigram index, which also brands uses trigrams for the key, and it has locations for for the cozy list. And we, we're going to see some something interesting here in the form of now. I'm going to be an empty one. Again, I populate in the index with kind of uh, data that doesn't make any sense now, but it's just for showing you how it works. Um, and adding Apple, the location, it will be this file name I just made up. Apple.txt, uh, Apple buy on the dessert.txt applied on a random file and then this um, file contents on this file which is called false positive of course we going to find out why right so let's see about how the trevor index works uh, i'm going to search for app let's see that the result first oh, sorry about that okay so as you can see, ATP appears on apple.dxc, is shared uh, rather though, but not on, on the false positive one. Let's see how it works. And what we are about to see is Oops, are here. That would be enough. Okay, so the technique used behind this is called the trigger search. In this case, this implemented using a trigram edits, which is the, the object that we are dividing, but you could implement that trigram search using a real search. It's just a aggregator, right? So the first thing we have to do is we have an index here, which we're going to use to speed up the search. And it's populated as an initial with all the trigrams that we index and the locations where that trigger appears, right? So the only thing we have to do here is we'll have to get the trigrams for the query itself. In this case, the trigrams will be just into the word because it's already three characters long. So first we'll do this. A query trigrams and also price is just the query. And then we asked the index, hey, give me everything at this uh, term. In this case, it's only one. We get the results, and there's nothing else to do here. So, we're done. Um, same from this one. Uh, the interesting thing about the, the, the trigger search is that once you get the results, you can 
have false positives, right? So in this case, I'm searching for the word cars. The trials for cars are uh, over here, CAR and ARS. I'm going to find all the entries under that, those terms. In this case, there are all the two. This is for the first one, and this is for the second one. So only probably false supposed to be filed and match that. We take the intersection because we want to the files out of the locations to include all the training grams that we submitted as a query and we return the results. But the thing here is that if, it, if the index says that uh, the cars appears on the false positive file, which is not true, right? We have the trials, but they are separated. So in this case, it's not the word that we were a bit for. So if, we, if you're using the training of search, you still have to do some sort of work once you get the results. And actually, I shouldn't say your results, I shouldn't say get kind of candy to the results, but because you still have to check if they, if they query that uh, in CSI submitted, it's the, the files are much, or the files or the docking is much that like query. So this is what basically everyone's to, right? They use either Visual Studio Code, um, WebStorm IDEs. This is the way uh, Google Code used to work. This is the way the EO tool that GitHub um, released, I believe, last month, the GitHub code search. Uh, they implemented that on top of the program search as well. Of course, at this at their scale, they have to do some kind of things that are different. They, they can have all the index in memory, so so they shard them and they do some cool stuff to kind of to do. still be able to produce results under 110 seconds. But the basic technique is is the same here. That there and it's the same thing that Postgres use for for implementing the full text search feature. Okay, so we have the trigram search, the, the trigram index. Now we're going to use it itself in that scene like dummy data. We're going to use the the compile methods, right? So I'm going to show a couple of examples first. Uh, small one to understand how it works, and then we're going to end the whole image, right? So we have the source code index object here. I'm creating an instance, and I'm going to add two, met two methods, uh, add and remove from, from college. So let's see how this works. I'm going to do it just for one. So we're going to go by method. The first thing that we need, of course, is the source code. Here it is. And I don't know about other dialects, but in quiz, when we asked the for the source code, I found out that it goes to this to load it. So it, this, this made the whole process slow. For indexing, I don't care much because you pay that price once. Uh, I mean, for the quality is right. But uh, for the SQL stage, stage of the search, what, once you have the narrow set of methods that could both potentially match the query, you have to fetch the source. And the response time was affected by that. So what I'm doing here, I, I, I'm just caching the, the source code. So it is always available when I need it. Uh, I would finally, we use the, the trigram search, the trigram at index object we did before. I would say that this source code appears at this location. In this case, the location of the posting is a compiled vector, right? So we saw that be, so we saw that easy before. We take the top, the document. We get the trigrams. There's going to be a lot of them here. And then what, what we're going to do is, oops, all right. We'll start this. So we have du the duplicates. The Here. And then we're going for each of the terms that, that were uh, related with this policy, which is the, the compiled method. What we're going to do is that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we're going to add it to a big chat, right? So in this case, we'll have only one entry. It's the first trigger we are processing. So this trigger appears 
in, in the source code of this compiler, right? Same for the remote method. And then to, to show how it works, we're going to see um, those methods here really quick. We're going to do some search based on big comments in this case. Uh, it reads removes all the object of the receivers elements that that will be enough. And for the other one, this similar include new object as one of the receivers elements. So if we search for new, it only will it only match the I method here. Collection I. In the same manner, if you search for all, it will match the remove. Both comments mention the uh, receiver. So if we search for receive, which is not a double war, we'll get add and remove. And we can turn case sensitive uh, on or off if I turn it the true and I search for, uh, search for new in uh, uppercase, then I don't have any much to see, right? So this is what I'm doing, but for the whole image. So I'm going to build an, in uh, an index with all the methods in this image, pretty gay or so, as you can see, uh, it doesn't take long, at least for, for an indexing test. Uh, the good news is about this is that if we can process 30 gay methods in about, I guess it's 14 in cycles or something like that, then if we have to update or, or remove when a method is recompiled, it is going to be very cheap, very fast, right? Not. Once we do that, we I can really repeat the search I did before on the UI, but I'll, I guess it's uh, calling the, the API. And as you can see, we already took a results in about, right, last time I checked, 140 new cycles, 100 mega cycles which is pretty fast, right? Yes, this one we can set for is this show you it. Oh. Uh, sell the search I just did, the search uh, self, end of the war. We can see that self is a pretty popular word. Let's find out how popular is Amnon here. It's quite popular. Usually it appears on, <laughs> on the comments. You still put things like that. Uh, but as you, guys, as you can see, this is what I was looking for. Like, I wanted to that it was responsive and kind of in the end, what I wanted is to improve the developer experience and be able to ask some questions that even though he could be asked before, uh, it, it was, we had to wait a long time until we have the answer, right? So the end, the, the end goal here was to have a, a better uh, developer skiers. Okay, some uh, things here, which is, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Usually in string processing, you have three stages. You pre-process one, which is uh, the one that I show, which is uh, doing some work on the documents you have to be able to uh, do fast queries or, or submit fast queries. Um, then we need uh, the, a writing stage, right? Because not all results are equally relevant. So we have to define what means uh, writing in the term of a full search or in the term in, in, in the sense of uh, the glass search and such. So that stage is missing, and I guess I'm just sorting results uh, alphabetically or something like that, which is totally uh, not a good writing strategy here. Uh, another thing that could be do is that uh, do a new query language, just like the um, GitHub search does. You can do uh, a little repo uh, and just this repo, so the search will be submitted just within this repo, and we can go crazy about binding a super query language. I don't know if it's worth it, but it's something that can be done. And something really cool that I didn't mention is that uh, what we really want here is to be able to do some Redix, like, like, like to submit them some Redix here. And this is a big issue. And this is for GitHub. They mentioned that they, they have something like, like, like 25 million repos or even more, I guess 20, 25 was on the, on the, on the beta, that, the, the thing that they supported. 
And can you imagine running a raid raids against 25 million repos and submitting an, uh, and getting an answer within 100 milliseconds? That's impossible. So the good news for us is that uh, Russ Cox from is this the the person that was responsible to to implement it? I guess most of um, Google Code back in the day, uh, he uh, solved this problem. Basically, again, Telegram yeah, index is used. Uh, he has a way of mapping a subset of regular expressions. Lucky for us, the subset is basically all that we want uh, to a Telegram search. So basically, he's able to derive trigrams from the uh, regular expression. So that, that way, you can have really fast uh, rate searches using a trigram in this. That's the same technique that, again, will go to uses. So it is, it is I guess, a piece of is, is solid enough to, to trust this. Like if GitHub is using that, and each time you look for regits and trigram, someone points to that blog post, so it has to have something good there, right? A uh, couple of references here. Uh, the post about the new GitHub uh, code search feature. There's a talk to mention on the post where there is the they don't say much about the secret sauce, but they mention the trigram index and the kind of things they do. Um, this is the article from Russ Cox and about how Google search worked and, and the technique about mapping regular expression of the drivers is described there as well as the program index. Uh, again, program index may show uh, all the postures. And the Faro guys with something similar to this is not a program index, but they have to be, I guess they have an English with a kind of a minimum objects or something like that. And the 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 spotlight as far as Spotter tool was slow for that case. So they use um, a suffix tree to solve the issue. It's not the same as a trigger of search. It's more tailored for full text search. But it's a very cool readme. There are four uh, posts there. Very detailed, very easy to understand. So kudos to, to Pablo for, for, for that writer. Couple of hooks, interesting ones. Algorithm on strings, tree and sequences. This is very cool. Basically, every string algorithm you you want to uh, find about the schema thing. In there is this is more like a high level uh, book that uses, I guess, solder for for implementation. But there are a couple of uh, algorithms and and some theory mentioned that is worth great too. So that's all. This is the the finder tool. You can find it here. You see it already present if you use Quiz Universe, University, and you can study the Sabbath if you use the stock uh, Quiz Cage. Uh, I just wanted to know how you deal with uh, case sensitivity when you are building the indices. Is it you have like two indexes or is just some more? Not only really. the index is built on. I, I condense the, the spaces and I transform the source code to lowercase, right? Um, the, same, the same goes for the query. So basically you, you treat doc, the documents you index and the query the same way. You do the same kind of uh, process and you do the same kind of tokenization, in this case, these three, three triggers. And the nice thing, uh, thing about the trigger of search is that uh, the goal is to reduce the the the, 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 the candidate results, right? So we go from from 30k to to probably three, and in that case, you can pay the price of the linear search. So once you get the the three or four results for the 20k, as I mentioned when I search for self, then you run the just a linear search on the source code, and in I, and I don't know about other layers, so in the scene, in the case of Swiss, I managed to do that under. Uh, 190 milliseconds, right? For the linear search, in, in this case, I'm using a feature that is already present in the Quiz Browser, which is hey, highlight all the words, um, all, 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 all these, uh, uh, all these uh, strings, all these methods, and you can turn case sensitive on and off there. So that's the nice thing that you can do anything you want once you have a small set of results. Yeah. 
Very thanks. How much space do they use when you hold the index and do you I'm just hitting me and we popped and gone the square shop and yes. Uh I measure about one hundred megabytes uh is the say the size of the index in this particular image. I believe it's not bad even that this is something that one will use already on our development development image and if you're going to use this on production you probably won't need this index. So yeah. You mentioned that you normalize the search by the lower casing them. Do you also remove the tinders, the accents? No, not really. This the searching for code is a different kind of task that doing kind of a general full text search for it it's for for many things for instance, when you do full text searches, you kind of get rid of all punctuation marks. Uh, you probably you probably uh, reading some frequent words like the and some kind of the, the most popular words because that that is going to mess up with your index. In the case of source code search, you want the co the, the, to, the code to be untouched. Probably is to skip some of the what I do is I condense spaces. So let's say that you're searching for uh, I don't know a me uh, a message set that is. Uh, that, that has a lot of space in between, but you search like with one space in between, you want that much, right? You, you want that to result to a beard. So what, what, the only thing, the only pre-processing I'm doing to the source code is, besides turning that to, turning it to lower case, is condensing all spaces, consecutive spaces into just one space. Yeah. Thank you. But cool. <laughs>